My buddies called me Mr. Hercules. In high school, I bench pressed 400 pounds, played linebacker for the Booker T. Washington Warriors. When I got drafted in 1960, I was 22 years old with a 52-inch chest. I served in Korea, Germany, and stateside as a drill sergeant at Fort Jackson. Life was good. Drill troops half the day, weight lift the other half, then make my red Mustang shine like new money, drive over to the PX, pick up Queen after she got off work. My goal was to save my money, marry Queen, and start a health club. But instead, I got shipped to Vietnam. I reported for duty November 1966, based out of Camp Du Phu in the Central Highlands. I was a platoon sergeant with three squads, and I kept my troops trained and alert. In the spring of 67, things really heated up. There were more firefights, copters shot down. I wasn't afraid, but I wasn't sleeping all that well either, I'll admit it. I woke up one morning and there was a hand grenade a few feet from where we were camped. It didn't go off, but Charlie had gotten real close, too close. First couple of days of May, we got hit hard. Platoons were returning to camp with casualties, dead and wounded soldiers, missing arms and legs. On Sunday, May 3rd, they sent us all out. I didn't feel good about it. Sunday's a day for church, not for killing, but you do what you're told. I was leading the first squad of my platoon, walking real slow. Now, we could tell the VC were near, the unnatural stillness you get a sense after a while, and I pulled out a grenade. Then the top of my boot tripped a landmine. It exploded, tore through my buttocks and my left leg, punctured my lung, and sliced through my right leg. The grenade I was holding went off. I tried to stand up, but my legs had no power. Then I rolled over and saw that my right arm was missing. They wrapped me up tight, Called in a chopper. Two days later, I was at Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines. How do you describe the smell of gangrene on your own body? It spread and spread from the left foot up my leg until they had to amputate it at the hip. I arrived at Walter Reed on May 13th with open wounds, a 107 degree fever, and kidney and liver failure. Now, I knew they didn't expect me to make it, and part of me was afraid that they were right. I wanted to yell at the docs, don't you go shaking your head in pity like you're sure I'm going to die, because I'm not. See, I was fighting for my life. But when I got put back on the ward, I, I felt so alone, discarded. I was suffering inside and out. I was depressed, and I was angry. Why me? Who was Mr. Hercules now with half a body? And then my queen arrived. I smelled bad, I looked worse, but I asked her to marry me right then and there, and she just smiled. June 14th, 1967, we were married. The next 16 months, I dropped from 220 to 135 pounds. I needed 85 pints of whole blood, had operation after operation to graft the skin from my back over the wounds in my legs. First time they sat me up in a wheelchair, the nurse pushed hard on my stomach to make my body bandit. I tell you, I was screaming and sweating, cursing. Pain like that makes you humble. Humility. My stepsons used to call me strong daddy, but now they were helping their mother lift me onto the bedpan. That's humility for you, my new reality. Now, there were a lot of other guys who got shot up that gave up. They either committed suicide or started drinking and never stopped. And believe me, it was a struggle for me too. And for a couple of years, I went down that route until I looked in the mirror one day and hated what I saw. I remembered how I used to push myself when I was Mr. Hercules. I realized that it was up to me to make something happen because no one was going to do it for me. As they say, a dead fish floats with the current, 
but a live fish swims upstream, and Ted Strong was going to be a live fish swimming with one arm and one leg. It took me a year to learn to walk again with a prosthetic leg and a brace. Meanwhile, Queen and I had two more kids and I had to support my family. It was time to reorder my priorities, so I went back to school on the GI Bill, graduated with a degree in computer technology. Now let me tell you, getting myself up and out to work every day never ceases to be a struggle. It takes me two hours every day. It's, well, almost 50 years. I'm 77 now. It's been almost 50 years since my injury, but over time I've come to view my disability as a strange kind of blessing. You know, before I lost my limbs, I was only half a man. I looked only at myself. Now I've developed some humility. I can look at the average person and understand him. So it's truly possible for a man to lose half his physical being and still become a whole person.